Good morning, Kentsville Church. We sure do miss you. This is Jim and Pam Gazzard. We're looking forward to seeing you all again when we get back to going to the building for church. But in the meantime, enjoy the Kentsville Church online. I miss high-fiving the children, miss hugging all the, and handshaking all the people coming in the door. We love you all. Miss you. Can't wait to see you. Bye. Good morning, Kentsville Church. We sure do miss you. This is Jim and Pam Gazzard. We're looking forward to seeing you all again when we get back to going to the building for church. But in the meantime, enjoy the Kentsville Church online. I miss high-fiving the children, miss hugging all the, and handshaking all the people coming in the door. We love you all, miss you, can't wait to see you. Bye.
We want to welcome you today and thank you for joining us at Kempsfield Church Online. We are so glad that you have taken the time out of your Sunday morning to join with us and we want to invite you to participate this morning. Get off your couches, stand up in your living rooms and let's just have a great time. Let's, let's set aside this time on this beautiful Sunday morning and let's bless the Lord. Let's lift up His name. Let's sing aloud His praise. Let's let, His wor let, let the worship of the Lord resound in our homes and let it dwell deeply in our hearts. Let's bless the Lord together. And so I can't think of a better way to start than for us to go to the Lord in prayer. So I invite you to join with me now. And in fact, if you may want to just reach across to your family member and grab them by the hand and let's pray together and believe God for a mighty move today that we will see God do wonderful and glorious things. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. Lord, thank you that in the midst of this pandemic, God, you still and always are on the throne. God, you are with us. You are bringing us through this storm. God, you are indeed guiding and directing us. Lord, you are protecting us. You are helping us. Lord, we're thankful for your presence that is with those on the front lines, those who are uh, all the essential workers, God, who are belaboring or laboring every day, God, to work diligently, God, to provide care to those who are sick and, Lord, in need. Father, we just lift them up to you as well. But Lord, as we begin our time of worship together, Lord, we ask that, Father, you would, your presence would just abide in our hearts and homes, our lives in this sanctuary, God, that your presence, God, would be preeminent above every fear, every worry, every anxiety, and that, God, as we set our eyes upon you in the midst of this service, as we turn our hearts and our attention upon you to lift up your name and to worship you, that, God, you would indeed abide strongly with us and that, God, your presence would reign supremely in our hearts, our lives, our homes, our city, our nation, and our world. We give you glory and praise, and we thank you for this opportunity we have to join together, even though it may be in a digital format. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to gather together to worship you and lift up your glorious and wonderful name, and so we thank you for your presence in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Let's worship the Lord together today. And oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider.
side so heaven is real and death is a lie i want to hear voices of angels above singing as one
Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head down, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as my friend and i have lived in the goodness of god oh yes all my life you have been Of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I'll give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I'm gonna sing of your goodness oh God and all my life you have been been so, so good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Beth, lead us in that again. All my life, no my life, you have been faithful. Yes, you have. Oh yes. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. I'm gonna sing of the goodness. Goodness of God. Amen, church. You know, right where you are, right there in your living room, right here, join us within the sanctuary. Oh, we're enjoying the presence of the Lord. I will sing of the goodness of God. 
You know, sometimes you may be feeling sad, you may be feeling depressed, you may be dealing with the cabin, cabin fever and it feels like well, this is never going to end. Can I tell you? It's in those moments, those darkest, deepest of moments, you can just turn your head towards heaven and say, God, you've always been faithful. So I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I will lift up my hands in the midst of all the depravity we find ourselves in. We can lift our heads to the Lord and say, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God because all of my life, God has been faithful. Oh, Sister Beth and praise team, let's sing it one more time. All my life, oh, all my life, you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have, Lord. And all my life, you have been so, so good. And with every breath that I am able, oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now as we meditate. God, as we ponder upon your goodness, your faithfulness, your love. Lord, your, your, your sustaining power that is with us every day. God, as we, as we pause and we consider those, God, in our congregation, others, Lord, who are dealing with cancer, with sickness. Lord, those who are struggling with depression, Father. Lord, those who are struggling with hurts and habits and hang-ups. God, we just give ourselves to you just as we are. Father, we pray in the midst of this for one another. Lord, we lift up those in our congregation, God, those, God, who are joining us digitally right now on YouTube or Facebook, God. Lord, whatever formality they're facing, God, whatever difficulty they're in, God, whatever sickness, God, is they're struggling with, Lord, we lift them up to you right now. Father, we know that you as the great physician hold all the power and the ability. God, you can do great things. God, you can speak to very the, that very sickness. God, you can curse those very cancer cells. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift them up to you. God, you can straighten backs. God, you can bring and restore healing to backs, God, that are in great pain. Father, you are able to touch in the name of Jesus. God, you're able to heal marriages. God, you're able to touch souls, God, that are struggling with depression and anxiety. God, you're able to lift our heads up. And so, God, we come before you as your children, as sons and daughters who have been grafted into the vine. And we ask you, Father, do a work today. God, right now as we join together in prayer, Lord, let your Holy Spirit, Lord, let the power of Pentecost reign supremely in hearts and lives today. God, let the power of Jesus, God, Lord, lift up hearts, God. Touch people's lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God, seal and deliver, complete and heal. God, let your power, let your anointing, God, in the name of Jesus, God, touch and encourage. Lift us up today, oh God, all across this land. We join together, binding our souls together, confident that there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is authority in the word of God that declares by your stripes. We are healed. God, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, I ask you, God, to, Lord, deliver people, God, right now that have been oppressed by the enemy. God, those who have been uh, 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 faced with onslaughts of the enemy and attacks, God, where the enemy is trying to attack. Oh, God, deliver your people right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over every home. I plead the blood of Jesus over every soul. I plead the blood of Jesus, God, over this church. I plead the blood of Jesus over 
every pastoral staff member in their homes, God, over every congregant, every member, every visitor, everyone joining us right now. Today I plead the blood over their homes, God, and we ask you in the name of Jesus, oh God, to complete that work which concerns us, God, to bring us through, oh God, and we thank you and believe you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. And everyone said with faith in your heart alive together today. Amen and amen. Let it be done. I feel the power and the anointing of the Lord. Old church, I want to encourage you. Don't let yourself get downcast. Don't let yourself get all worked up in depression and rolling in the pit. Oh, let's walk in faith today. Let the power and the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit lift up your soul. Walk with your head lifted up towards the heavens, knowing that your redemption draweth nigh. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Our God is faithful and He is good. Amen and amen. Brother Brett's going to come and share some announcements, and we have some special treat for you as well today, and I'm looking forward to sharing from Scripture. Thank you again for joining us at Kempsville Church. Go ahead and hit a few likes and a few loves. Go ahead and type in an amen. Go ahead and type in a testimony. Just let everybody know how you're doing. This type of testimony and share with us what God is doing in your heart and your life. As we continue on, don't leave us now. Keep with us. Stay with us through the entirety of our broadcast this morning. We're so thankful that you have joined us today. Brother Brett. Good morning, Kimsfield Church. Glad everyone can join us from your living rooms or wherever you're at today. If you're watching it later, I'm glad you're watching then. I have a few announcements I want to make everyone aware of. Uh, just like we've had every week, we had the Kids for Christ at Home. It's a new thing every single week that's been put together by Carrie Amore um, and Mark Amore to, to have your kids have that experience at home where they can still have that kids ministry while they're, they're in your homes. So make sure you check that out on our website. You can find the link there, and on there you'll find a game, worship videos, a lesson, and activities that you can go uh, through with your children at home. So make sure you do that and find out which elements work the best for, for your family in particular. And if you'd like to send us some pictures of your family going through that, we'd love to see those. You can post them on social media and connect us uh, to those as well. And we'd love to, love to see that and see the ministry happening right in your home. You may have noticed during our uh, pre-service uh, announcements this morning and in the past few weeks, we've had some videos from some families in our church that have uh, shared those so they can let everyone know that they love them, they care about them, and we'd love to have even more of those videos so we can see all of you uh, every service. We want to make sure that people still are connected to you and connected to one another. So if you'd like to participate in that, uh, you can send us a video that's 30 seconds long or less and in horizontal or landscape orientation, and you can send those videos or, or questions to me, or you can email those to kcogoffice at gmail.com. I also want to remind everyone that this Saturday at 9 a.m., we're having our men's breakfast online. So you're going to bring your own breakfast to your phone, computer, or tablet and hop on Zoom with the guys at Kempsville Church. So if you're a guy watching right now, I want to let you know that you are personally invited. I am personally inviting you. So make sure you join us for that. We're going to get together together virtually and continue our Be a Godly Man series. Um, I also want to remind everyone that we have our digital connect cards, which are available uh, online. Yeah, there should be all these links should be in your feed right now. So if you see that digital connect card, you can let us know about any upcoming procedures, any surgeries, um, and any prayer requests that you have. And we'll include those on the prayer slides and prayer text. So that's all I have. And now we have a special video for you. I'm um, going to turn it over to that. Church of God. We want to give you an update about us during this pandemic. Yes, uh, even this time has been a really hard time of crisis for the church in economics and ministry. We are very thankful and very excited because we have found a new new ways to train people and make a difference. Sophie, what have you been doing during this time? Well, during this time, I've been taking online classes from the Bible school, but also as a youth minister, we've been gathering together to pray and worship the Lord around the whole world. Wow, yes, that's amazing what they are doing. They are gathering from all over the world, making a difference, making disciples. I'm, I'm very excited about you. What about you, Katie? What have, been you, what have you been doing during this it's, time? It has been a great opportunity because we are training church planters leaders about in all over Latin America. Um, we are so excited as a family. Uh, we are at, um, with our family in Chile, in Abu Dhabi, in all over the world, making groups online. Yes, and, and, we are, um, and the, the great thing 
is that even we are in social distance, but not in a spiritual distance. The Lord yes. have given us the opportunity to train, as Katie said, 1,756 leaders in, in how to take the church from the temples to the houses, to start home churches and mm -hmm. online churches. And also we are training pastors, almost a thousand of pastors, in how to mentor the church during this time of crisis. God has been good in this Praise. time, and we appreciate your prayers and your giving, and also thank you for taking care of us and being with us. Also, Maria Victoria wants to say hello. Hi. Hello, Maria Victoria, say bye. No, Dale un besito. Bye-bye. <laughs> we love you. God we bless you. you. All across this world, the ministry is not being stopped. The ministry, ministry is not being thwarted. We are continuing on and pressing forward. And so we just want to thank you all for joining with us again. Uh, I want to take a moment and just say, Pastor Jason, I saw a couple videos of your songs today. Uh, and man, you're really good. And I, you got a great heart for the Lord. And you're doing a tremendous job in the midst of all this, doing ministry and reaching out to people and releasing songs and so if you have not seen pastor jason's uh productions it's jt productions you can find him at uh, youtube and also on facebook you can find him on facebook and check out some of his videos uh, i like the one with judah that was cool too that, i like the, that snippet that was brought in there but uh, just let me tell you and to, to check out his stuff it's really cool stuff really great music and his, and his songs are all about the lord they're all about serving the lord and our walk and our journey in faith. So I just want to encourage you to check out his stuff. It's some great stuff, a great ministry that he and Pastor Jackie have and all of our pastoral staff. We've been keeping in touch with Pastor Melvin and uh, Pastor Yvonne are doing wonderful. They're hunkered down and pressing through all of this. And if Pastor Yvonne's working, still working diligently and <clears throat> uh, within her job and Pastor Melvin as well, and they're doing well. And then also Pastor, Chris and Pastor Beth are doing well. In fact, you saw them today. They did a great job leading us in worship. And uh, Sister Beth, I think you had a birthday this week, didn't you? Happy birthday. It is, we want to wish you a happy birthday this week and, and just are proud of you and your ministry. Uh, my wife had a birthday as well. Uh, our, the ladies, are, they're not getting older, they're getting younger. It's a, blessed, a blessing of the Lord, and so we just want to wish you happy birthday uh, to Beth and to my wife, to others of you who are having birthdays. We've been signing birthday cards and making sure those get out. Uh, so if you had a birthday this week, happy birthday. But uh, let's, let's turn our hearts and minds towards the Scripture this morning. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and asking His blessing. Uh, let me open, first of all, with the reading of Scripture. And if you want to join me, go to chapter uh, Mark, chapter 10. Uh, I'm going to read verses 17 through 31, uh, and let's look at Scripture today. Let's familiarize ourselves with the text and uh, what we're going to be looking at today as we preach and study and meditate on God's Word. In Mark chapter 10, verse 17, it says, And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. 
for all things are possible with God. And Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I, I know what I believe you've put on my heart to share with us today. So God, as we come before you, we ask that, Lord, you would help us. Lord, help us as we meditate, as we consider the word of God today. Lord, as I preach, God, I pray for your anointing. I pray that, Holy Spirit, you would flow through me. God, not just to the hearing of those very few here right now who are enabling us to do this broadcast, but God, those who are joining us right now on Facebook or YouTube. God, I pray for them, God, as well. Lord, I pray that you would help us all to set our minds, our hearts, our spirits upon you. And Holy Spirit, as we yield ourselves to you, speak to us, encourage us, direct us, convict us, draw us ever near and closer to you than ever before in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Pastor Chris and Beth and pastoral staff, our, our technology team, Brother Mark and Brother Brett back there working hard. They've got monitors going everywhere and cameras and keyboards and wires and cords and all kinds of stuff. There's so many electronic things going on back there that it, it's just a smorgasbord of confusion for me. But I so appreciate their wisdom, their talent, their dedication, their faithfulness. So guys, thank you. Uh, Brother, Brother Jeff was thumping the guitar so hard in rehearsal today for the uh, for a broadcast this morning that he, he was so excited about leading in praise and worship that he, 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 he messed something up. But boy, I tell you what, he's wise. He had another bass. Jeff, you couldn't tell the difference at all. You sounded great, man. Good job. And then AJ's back there thumping on the drums. AJ, did you, did you break a drumstick today? Not yet. We're praying that AJ's going to break a, dun, a, drumstick, a, a drumstick before it's over. I am. I, I want to see that drumstick fly through the air. And so we're, we're believing that's going to happen. But let's, let's look at Scripture now this morning. I just want to, I want to share sort of, I hope I'm, I remember to share the points themselves, uh, but, but it's really an expository message. And I want to begin by, by let's, let's look at what is taking place. Scripture tells us that there's a man who runs up to Christ and he kneels before him and he asks him something that is very pertinent for all of us. It's a question about eternity. And this young man is given a lifetime eternal opportunity. Now he poses the question before Christ, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now isn't that the question that we still wrestle with today? Humanity is coming up with all kinds of solutions. Humanity is coming up with all kinds of decisions. There's people all across this world from, from the time man began till the time mankind will end still wrestle with this question of life after death. So it's a very real question that we still deal with today is what must I do? When I die, where will I go? When I die, what will take place? What, where will my soul be? There's people who believe that once you die, that's it. There's nothing else. You're just simply deposited into the ground or, or into the seas or wherever it may be. And life as you know it has ended. There is no eternity. Others who believe various things. I'm not going to go through all the various beliefs. But so this young man asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And so we want to look at the response of Christ and we want to deal with the answer to that question. And I believe that after the service, if you're viewing here today and if you have not made that decision to, to, to make sure you're ready to meet the Lord, my prayer is that the love and the power of God and, and the gift of His Son will just rest Arrest your heart and soul and that you would make a decision today. And so with that question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? I want us to look at the, the response of Christ. We see in verse 19, basically Jesus says, Well, have you been following the commandments? 
And then Jesus sort of entertains a few. He says, Have you, uh, do, you, do you commit murder? Do you uh, commit adultery? Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your mom and your dad. We know next Sunday is going to be Mother's Day. It's going to be a different Mother's Day, but we, we, hope, we, are, we hope we're going to have a treat some way for you and, and uh, have a special service next Sunday. But Jesus poses these questions, and and the young man responds very gleefully and joyfully, and he says, Teacher, all of these I have kept from my very youth. In other words, I've been doing all that I can to make sure I follow the law. I've been doing all I can to follow the Talmud or the the commandments, if you will, and all that we know in Scripture according to to the Word of God as it was then uh, in the Old Testament and the commandments of God to the people of Israel. He says, I've been doing all of these things. I've been making sure to follow the commandments and, and live my best according to the law. And then Jesus then poses another question. He, I love this. He says, Jesus, and look at this, Jesus looked at him. Now, he was already looking at him, but, but I think we can take that to a deeper level. It's like Jesus looked not just at the, the physical outward, but Jesus is now looking at the inward. He's searching the soul. He knows the soul. And we know that Jesus, being fully God and fully man, knows the intents of our hearts and lives. He knows our thoughts. He, he knows our ways, Scripture tells us. And so Jesus looking at him, and then look at the next part. Scripture says, loved him. Jesus loved him. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you. He he cares for us, church. He loves us compassionately. No matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, whether you grew up with a quote-unquote religious background or not, it matters not. Jesus loves you and cares for you. And Jesus, as he looked to the very inner being of this young man, looked at him and loved him and and then said this to him, You lack one thing. You lack one thing, young man. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. He, it's, it's almost like Jesus is saying, you're worried about what you have on this earth. I'm promising you not only eternity, but treasure in eternity. In other words, the gold you think you have now that is so valuable is nothing in comparison to the treasure you will have and can have in eternity, which lasts forever. And so he challenges this young man to take all that you hold dear, all that you care about, all that you value, and give it all to the poor. And if you do that, you will have treasure in heaven. But look at the next part of this invitation, and that's why this is a lifetime eternal opportunity that Jesus is giving this young man. Because it says, after the words treasure in heaven, there's a semicolon, it says, and come, follow me. Jesus is inviting this young man, church, to take all that you have, just all you've got to do is let it go. All you've got to do is let go the very things that you value more than anything else in this world. Just let it go and come follow me. It's an invitation. If you'll just let that stuff go and come and follow me, oh, what joy you will have. Oh, what ministry you will have. Oh, what opportunity you will have. It was a lifetime eternal opportunity. But we know the response. We see the response in Scripture. And I want us to look at verse 22. After getting this eternal lifetime opportunity, the young man disheartened by the saying. He went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. My, my, my. It was just one thing that Jesus asked him to do. Take that one thing, those possessions you have in this case, and let it go. Now, I know that those in this sanctuary today and those viewing on Facebook and YouTube, we all have something. We all have that one thing that we are challenged by, whether it's riches, whether it's things, whether it's stuff, whether it's whatever it may be, already you, and I'm praying and asking the Holy Spirit to show you what is that one thing that you've been having difficulty letting go I know that as I'm sharing this, that there are those who have not come to Christ. There are those who refuse to go to church. They refuse to to even entertain the idea or the possibility of Christianity because they feel like there's this one thing that that, that just there's there's a reason why they, they won't entertain the idea, the possibility 
of responding to Christ and beginning a relationship with God. There's something that's been holding you back. There's something that you just can't imagine yourself letting go, and it's holding you back from being and experiencing all that God wants you to experience. What's that one thing? For this rich young man, it was riches. It was possessions. And he went away sorrowful, for he had many. And we see therein the the sadness of the story because, look, the invitation was to let it go, come and follow me. And so instead of being able to follow Christ, because he wasn't able to let it go, he went away disheartened and sorrowful. And that is a sad testimony. Our hearts should break, not judge this young man, because he is missing out on all that Christ would go on to teach and preach. All the experiences, all the disciples, and, and believe, I, believe, I believe that what, what, imagine what he could have experienced had he been able to let it go. Imagine what you would be able to experience in walking with God if you could just let it go. Can you let it go? And we see then, look at verse 23. By the way, that was the second point. All you have to do is let it go. You see, again, for that young man, his possessions meant the world to him. For us, whatever that one thing is, in and of itself, and here's the thing, in and of itself, that one thing that you've, that's been your hang-up or your hold-up may not in and of itself be bad for this young man. In fact, riches aren't bad. Scripture even tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, Scripture says this, in 1 Timothy 6, verse 10, says, For the love of money, it doesn't say money in and of itself, but for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. In other words, because of that love of money, it, it's brought about great pain. It's brought, brought about great anxiety. You see, there's no amount of money that can truly bring you joy. In fact, I've thought about uh, those who have great wealth and then they're faced with sickness, incurable sickness. And I've always believed that I, I am sure that they would probably be willing to give, give away all the billions and trillions of money they may have if they could find the cure to their cancer or their sickness. If they knew that all the money they had would make them whole and complete and well, I am sure they wouldn't think twice about it. Why? Because death is finite. And we are all faced with this question of eternity. What is that one thing for you? For this young man, it was his riches. What has been holding you up? What's been holding you up from experiencing all that God wants you to experience? And then we see this, and, and, and Jesus even deals with the, the difficulty of that question, the difficulty of that hang-up, the difficulty of that habit, the difficulty of what that one thing is that we've been struggling with that we can't let go, it seems. Jesus knows it's difficult because he looked and he said to his disciples, look at this in verse 23, Jesus said, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And we know that, that God understands the difficulty of letting it go because then Jesus and the disciples are amazed at this. And then Jesus responds and he repeats the same statement, but he alters it and makes it more general, more broad. Because in verse 24, as the disciples who were amazed at his words, Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God! Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. It's almost as if Christ, knowing that Scripture will be written, knowing that centuries will continue to read this passage of Scripture, it's like Jesus is compelling us all and, and asking us all, what is that one thing you've had a hard time letting go of? What is that one thing that's been so difficult for you? Jesus knows it seems like it's impossible to let go. So He said, how difficult it is. How difficult it is. And then He draws... In verse 23, 25, excuse me, verse 25, he, he gives us an illustration, if you will. Now, I've heard this preached several different ways, and I'm going to try to cover those, but he says, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. 
Now, we've all heard it preached, I've preached before, that referring to what a, a, the eye of a needle is, referring to that. And this came from 15th century uh, commentators, theologians, scholars uh, in the 15th century were instructing that basically the needle was a, uh, a, an enlargement in a portal, or a, I'm sorry, it was a small portal, portal that was used by pedestrians when they were entering a walled city through which a camel might squeeze after its load was removed and this turned the impossible into the possible and became attractive by suggesting that as the camel had to leave its load and crawl on its knees so the rich man had to shed his riches in other words his love for them and humble himself on his knees and crawl into the kingdom but every commentary I have read dealing with this very scripture, this very verse, every commentary I read, other than the one I just shared that talked about later on in the 15th century when this was being taught or instructed, said that, every, again, every commentary I read said Jesus was literally talking about the impossibility of a needle and the eye of that needle. Everyone who sews understands what I'm talking about. Everyone knows, I think everyone generally knows, the, the eye of a needle is speaking to that very small place in the needle where you have to very carefully uh, put a thread through that needle. And then Jesus says, it's impossible for a camel. Now, everyone who has Google and anyone who's ever, uh, you know what I'm talking about, a camel. Imagine the eye of a needle and a camel. We all know it's impossible to put a camel in. The, and when you look at the Talmud, it's actually the the. The, the usage is not a camel. They say an elephant was the common term that was used for this illustration. It was, a, it, was a, it was an illustration used to show the impossibility of something. So they would say it's impossible for an elephant to fit through the eye of a needle. Now here Jesus used a camel as an illustration. In other words, it seems impossible to let it go. Brother Jeff, there's things I believe we all deal with. And AJ, talking to the Two people in the sanctuary right now. Three, I'm sorry, Pastor Chris and Beth, they're over there hiding on the left side. The impossibility we all deal with. And I want you to just, can we just, just pause and think about that. Have you ever been there where it seems impossible to let something go? It seems impossible to get over something, to get through something. Christ understands how difficult it is. Look at this. He continues on. In verse 26, the, di the, uh, the Word of God tells us that the disciples were exceedingly astonished. And they said to Him then, then how, can, then how can we be saved? How can we be saved? We've been following you and walking with you and, and, and doing all the... How can we be saved if it's impossible? How can we be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said... With man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Amen. And if we pause and think about that for a moment, can I just remind you, it wasn't me that was able to save myself. I tried. Brother Jeff, it wasn't you that was able to save yourself. AJ and Pastor Chris, Sister Beth and Mark and, and Brett back there. It wasn't ourselves that were able to save our. We can't save ourselves. Oh, we tried. We tried to make up. We tried to make amends for the wrongs we have done others. We've tried to make things right. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. You should. Scripture tells us we should do that to go. And if you have aught with your brother, go and make it right with him. But oh, I'm dealing with the eternal question today. I'm dealing with, dealing with the most important question we all as human humans breathing air still today are faced with. And that is how can we get to heaven? How can we make sure we're ready to go? Go. What are we to do? How can we make ourselves ready to meet the Lord? And I'm here to remind you that with man it is impossible. I couldn't go to the cross. There's nothing I could do for my righteousness is as filthy rags, says Scripture. But oh, with God, all things are possible. And can I just tell you in my office as I was preparing this message, I got excited when I looked at the cross reference to that verse when Jesus said, uh, with man 
man it's impossible, but not with God. All things are possible. So I looked at the cross reference for Jesus' response to the question of the disciples. And there's four or five particular verses that are used in that cross reference. Can I just share them with you? Genesis 18 verse 14 with Abraham and Sarah. Oh, you remember the story when Abraham and Sarah who was old and barren and aged and not able to conceive. And, and the message of the angel to Abraham was, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year. And Sarah shall have a son. You see, Abraham and Sarah had given up. They thought there's no way we're ever going to be able to have a child. But then God showed up and said, with man it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I've got good news for you, Abraham and Sarah. About this time next year, I'm going to show up again. And when I show up, there's going to be a little baby coodling and coddling, crying out, oh, you're going to be experiencing the joy next year. Right now it seems impossible, but hold on, brothers and sisters. God's going to do a work. Oh, hallelujah. But then you go to Job 42, verse 2. Everybody who knows Scripture understands about Job. Job had experienced some of the worst traumatic things anyone could ever experience. He lost all of his possessions. He lost all of his children. Uh, he was plagued with boils all over. He lost sheep. He lost cattle. I mean, everything. His business was destroyed. And I just feel a little unction right now within me. Somebody's out there. You may be experiencing a loss of income because your business is failing. You may think I'm, it's over. We're never going to make it through. But can I tell you, let's consider the words of Job. Let's consider what Scripture says when Job stated in Job 42 verse 2. He says, I know that you, he's talking to God, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Right now it seems like you're never going to make it. Right now it seems like it's not going to get better. But can I tell you, God can do all things. We serve a God who is mighty. We serve a God who is powerful. We serve a God who can do it all. You think it's impossible. You're having a tough time letting it go. But oh, can you just let God do a work? Just let God do the impossible in your life. But it doesn't stop there. When you go to the book of Jeremiah, verse 32, verse 17, the prophet Jeremiah prayed this. He said, Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Oh, Jeremiah understood. He understood the, uh, what, who we're praying to and who we're believing in and who we're trusting our lives in. We're trusting our lives to God the creator of this universe. The one who holds the stars. Who placed the planets. Who holds the galaxy. Who created all of this. And still holds it in place still today. Oh do not be dismayed my brothers and sisters in Christ. God is still in control. He's still in charge. And our God can do it all. Our God can do the impossible. He's going to bring us through this church. Amen. And it continues on in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 32, verse 22. Then look what, how God responds to the prayer of Jeremiah. God responds, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Oh, you see, with man it is impossible, Jesus said. But with God, Brother Jeff, all things are possible. But oh, it doesn't stop there because just as God had, had visited Abraham and Sarah and gave them good news in the midst of their barrenness, God sent an angel to a young lady named Elizabeth. Actually, I'm sorry, not a young lady named Elizabeth. She was old and barren, for lack of better words. I don't mean that to be, to be rude or condescending to anyone of age. But can I tell you, the Bible says she was old and barren, beyond her child-barren years. And the angel's simple declaration to Elizabeth in Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says, For nothing will be impossible with God. You see, that angel just told Elizabeth that guess what? You're going to conceive and bear a son. And he's going to foretell the coming of the Savior. He's going to declare in the wilderness, Here comes me. Here comes one whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. We know that's John the Baptist. We know that's what he went on to do. And in the midst of that, after telling Elizabeth that good news, he then says, for nothing, that's country, that's the way we say nothing in country, nothing 
For nothing is impossible with God. Can we just pause right now? Can we just hit about 20 likes and 30 amens? Can we just hit a little love and say, praise the Lord. Clap our hands, all ye people, because our God is in control and there's nothing that is impossible with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good preaching. And he concludes it with this. In verse 29. You see, for most of us, all of us, that one thing we need to let go of seems impossible. The one thing we're struggling with, or that we're dealing with, whether it's a hurt, a habit, a hang-up, whether it's a sinful activity, sinful thoughts, sinful intents of the heart, whether it's riches, whether it's whatever it may be, There's something that we're all dealing with today. What's that one thing you're having a tough time letting go? Jesus said, truly I say to you, there's no one who's left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father, children's or lands for the sake, for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time. He's not just saying in eternity. You see, the promise of Christ is not just... Will you make it in eternity? Not not only will you have treasure in heaven, but Christ is, is reminding us that, look, when you make a decision for Christ in your life, you're going to be blessed in this life as well. Now, that, I'm not trying to preach some kind of prosperity message because notice that Jesus doesn't say you're going to have great riches and wealth. He says the very things you feel like you're leaving now or the very things you've been having a tough time letting go of, if you'll be willing to let go of it and follow me, I'm going to return to it, return you to it. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, lands. Even with persecutions. Even with difficulties you may, you may encounter along the way. I'm not here to tell you the Christian life is going to make your life all hunky-dory, perfect, and you're never going to deal with difficulty. I'm here to tell you there are times where you will be persecuted. There are times where it's tough. There will be times where your friends are making fun of you because you've gone to God now. There's going to be friends telling you, oh, you've gotten religious now, huh? Oh, you, you're one of those people now. We call that persecution. Can I tell you that needs to break our heart because when you have found Christ, when you have been able to let go of that thing that has been holding back, can I tell you, you will have joy in your heart in the midst of pain, in the midst of struggle. You can have joy in your life, Brother Jeff. You know what I'm talking about. You've experienced that joy. Your life is better now than it ever would have been because you came to Christ. Christ didn't say, I'm not going to give you anything. Now Christ continues to bless you and take care of you and bring you through the storm even when your base messes up and when it breaks. Can I tell you, God's got a solution. And there is a solution. There is a fix. Why? Because God's good. We just sang about that earlier today. The praise team led us. God's good. His mercies are new every morning. And Jesus finishes it. And in this, and in the age to come, eternal life. We're living in a time where COVID-19, according to this time, has already gone over 60,000 Americans, according to those who tell us numbers that's correct, over 60,000 Americans have lost their lives. And that's just to COVID-19. But the reality is, is that every day people are dying. Before COVID-19, and I don't, my, I'm not trying to be gloomy and doomy, but people are dying every day. Even when COVID-19 is over, people will continue to die every day. And every day we will be faced with this eternal question. How can I know? I have eternal life. I am here to tell you today, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Choose Christ. Choose Him today. Don't put off to tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. I want to pray for all of us in this room. I want to pray for all of us joining us in Facebook and YouTube during the live broadcast and also who will be watching this later, still speaking to you. I want to ask you right now, with every head bowed, every eye closed, where are you? What have you been struggling with to let go? What has been holding you back? What is it that you've loved so greatly and you've, you've been like, well, I have to give this up if I come to Christ. And all you've been experiencing is pain and sorrow. 
Because even that thing that you value greatly, even that thing you find or think gives you life, truly is causing you a rotting of the soul. Because it's kept you from a relationship with God. God wants you to know Him. Jesus looked at this young man. And Scripture says when He looked at him, He loved him. Jesus is still looking today into the very inner being of our soul, and He loves you. It is the same Christ who would later on, as He was being crucified, as soldiers were putting nails into His hands and feet so that they could raise that cross up and put it in the ground. And with every swing of the hammer, with every further piercing of the hand and feet, every bit of pain that Christ was experiencing at that moment, He looks and He looked at those very ones who were nailing Him to the cross. And as He looked upon them and loved them, He prayed for them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Christ looks upon you today and with love invites you to come and follow Him. If you're here today, if you're a Christian today, but there's something that's been holding you back that you need to let go of, today is that day. Today is that moment. Don't give up on it. Some, someone here today, you've, you've been struggling with something and you haven't been able to let it go. In fact, you haven't been able to let it to go that you've come to the place where you quit praying about it. And you just said, you know, I guess I'm going to have to deal with this for the rest of my life. Can I tell you, don't give up. Don't give in. Continue to pray. Continue to give this to the Lord. Others of you here today have never made that decision because there's something you haven't been able to let go of. Let it go. Let it go. There's a song from a, a movie. It's a cartoon. It's a famous song that I think a lot of people sing a lot. The chorus simply, goes, simply says, let it go, let it go. That's what I'm asking you to do today. Let's let it go. Let's let it go. And the way you do that is you give it to God. Because it's impossible for you to do. But God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Oh yeah, it's impossible for you to, let, to, to, do, to, to do this work, but God can do it if you'll let it go. Father God, I pray for everyone here today in this sanctuary. I pray for everyone right there in their living room or maybe they're in their car or maybe they're in their bedroom or sunroom or wherever it may be that they're viewing this, Lord, as they bow with head bowed and eyes closed. God, I pray that, Father, right now, as they pray with me, and I invite you to just say these words, God, I want to let this go. This thing that I've been holding on to, I want to let it go. And you, I want to encourage you to be specific with the Lord. Whatever that is right now, just say, God, I let this go. Father, I know it's been impossible for me, but God, I'm asking you to do the impossible in my life. Father, I pray for them right now. I ask you, O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, as you've already been drawing them to you and working in their heart and life, Lord, I pray that, Father God, as they commit themselves to you, that, Father, the promises of your word would reign true if we confess our sins. You are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God, let the warmth and the power of your embrace, God, touch their soul and heart today. In the name of Jesus, we let it go. We let it go. God, do a work. Transform us. Renew us. Change us. Do a work, oh God, today. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Thank you again for joining us today. Before you go, I want to invite you to please remember the church in your giving. You've been so faithful, and I, we appreciate your faithfulness in giving. I know we're living in difficult, tumultuous times, but God is faithful. God is good, but we are dependent upon your giving. I'm so proud of our church. You see, there's a virtual walk for life. It was just completed uh, yesterday, I believe, on the, uh, and uh, on the... Uh, may, whenever it was completed, but the virtual walk for life, but it's, it may not be too late to sign up. You can do that and, and go and still sponsor a walker. Uh, the last time I looked, uh, because of your faithfulness in giving over $6,000, I believe, has been given 
to the Crisis Pregnancy Center, uh, to our five walkers who are doing the virtual walk for life. And I believe you can continue to do that. So you can go to our website or to our kids uh, there on our Facebook page. And you may still be able to give to that, so we encourage you to do so. Uh, you saw the Paniaguas. It was so good to see them, wasn't it? Uh, to, to hear them share what God is using them to do in ministry. And uh, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to connect as well with the Wozniaks who are in Peru. I, ha I have been in contact with them, and they're doing great. Uh, they've, been on, they've been on a lockdown even more stringent than what we see in the states here. Uh, but, uh, and maybe they'll share with you about that. But uh, we're hoping as well, we're praying for them and, and asking God to continue to touch them. So, uh, but continue to remember the Lord in your giving. So we thank you for giving your tithe and offering. You can do that by going to our website uh, and click under give, or you can text to give uh, by going to 757-250. I believe it's 4283. Yep, no, it's 4483. Okay, thank you. 757-250-4483. Thank you again for joining us at Kempsfield Church. We're looking forward to uh, being with you again next Sunday on Mother's Day. And we're asking God to bless, and we're just uh, looking forward to that as well. Uh, also, don't forget us on KC Connect, which takes place on Wednesday night uh, on our Facebook page as well. Uh, join Crystal and myself. We are uh, going, coming from our dining room into yours. We're joining with you and connecting. And also, don't remember the men's breakfast this coming Saturday. Uh, at 9 o'clock, that's going to be on Zoom. Uh, if you're interested in going to that, just email us or send us a text. Uh, let us know you're interested or send us a private message on Kinsville Church, and we'll make sure to get you an invite for that as well. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other announcements that I missed. If you, I t Here's the wonderful thing. The announcement slides are going to keep going after I, I, after I be quiet, which I think they're wanting me to do now. Uh, the announcement slides will be going, so make sure you pay attention to those. Look at those. Uh, and uh, you can also go back to the beginning of the broadcast and you'll see a greeting from uh, Jim and Pam Gazzard. And let me just ask you, to, we, we really would like to hear from you and see you as well. So if you don't mind, send us a, a little greeting. Let us know how you're doing. Uh, you can do it right there in the safety of your home or if you want to go out in your yard or front yard, however you want to do that. Uh, just send us a greeting. It doesn't have to be long. It can be 15, 20 seconds uh, no more than 30 seconds. Send us a greeting and we'd love to share that. Uh, we, we would love to hear from you. So we thank you again for joining us at Kempsfield Church. God bless you. If you need anything, please let us know. Be in contact with us. Uh, we love you and we're praying for you. And together we are going to continue to serve the Lord together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today.